Hi, I'm Lee Gatiss and this is Lee on the Lectionary. And this week we're looking at the Lectionary readings for the third Sunday of Lent in Year A. And those readings are Exodus chapter 17 verses 1 to 7, Romans chapter 5 verses 1 to 11, and John chapter 4 verses 5 to 42. As is appropriate for Lent, the readings this week use physical hunger and thirst to point us towards our true spiritual needs and satisfaction. The narratives in Exodus between the Red Sea and Sinai focus on God's good provision for his people. The bitter waters of Mara are made sweet. The Lord, our healer, keeps them healthy. Bread rains down from heaven. Quail covers the camp. The defeat of Amalek and the organisation of delegated civil government will follow. But in the episode we read this week, the people cry out for water. Bitter or sweet, they may not have cared, such was their thirst. Instead of turning to the gracious Lord, as they should, their anger and frustrated hopes are focused intensely onto a mere mortal, Moses. Moses does the right thing, seeking wisdom and help from God. The divine answer is merciful and kind, but also a little bit enigmatic, don't you think? Moses is to strike the rock, from which miraculously water will then pour out. And yet the Lord himself stands on the rock. Moses' staff must fall on him first before the water flows. That rock was Christ, the New Testament tells us. And so we have punishment for sin foreshadowed and provision for sinners accomplished in the one act. The Samaritan woman at the well discovers true satisfaction and the quenching of her thirst too. But the episode is about Jesus, not about the woman primarily. When he first answers her, he begins to lead her to a fuller understanding. If you knew who I was, he says, but all she hears is a line about the living water. He leads her gently through the intricacies of the conversation to the final conclusion. I am the Messiah. What she needed all along was not just water, but Jesus. Not just a husband, but Jesus. Not just answers to all her theological questions, but Jesus. Not just prophetic insight into her life, but Jesus. As he draws her to himself, Jesus draws others through her. The disciples, arriving late to the party, think that he must need some food. But he is more than content with the fruit of his mission. In the conversation and conversion of this Samaritan woman, he teaches them to see the harvest right in front of them and then stays for two days, reaping and rejoicing. The saviour of the world has brought salvation to the worldly. Paul brings this thoughtful reflection and same thing to this story of salvation. The deepest need of human sinners is peace with a righteous God. That is our ultimate desire and satisfaction. Our gracious justification by faith alone gives us all we truly need, including the eternal hope of glory, so that in this present age, where physical and emotional suffering is common, Disappointment need not be our lot. God pours into our hearts his living love through the Holy Spirit so that even our afflictions are turned to our good, producing endurance, character and hope. His love is demonstrated by the unmerited grace he has shown us in sending his Son to die in our place. As Article 2 of the 39 Articles reminds us, Christ was crucified to reconcile his Father to us, 
so that there is no longer war between us, but peace. We are saved through Christ's sacrifice from the wrath of God that we deserved. <laughs>